Hey, hello everyone. My name is uh, Dr. Ashwin Mahalingam and I am a professor in the Department of Civil Engineering. And I'm going to talk to you today for the next uh, 25 minutes or so on this topic of building information modeling or BIM. Okay, so let me just share my screen and we'll get uh, started right away. Okay, I hope everyone can see my screen. Um, so what I'm going to do over the next 25, 30 minutes is I'm going to talk about uh, first, a little bit about the challenges that we face today, um, what this building information modeling is and how it can help mitigate some of these challenges, and also talk a little bit about how do you implement building information modeling in your projects. And of course, throughout this, I will connect it, I will make connections to lean construction. Okay, so uh, let me start off with a fact that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Uh, construction projects feature uh, a large amount of time and cost overruns, right? Uh, roughly 90% of projects seem to be delayed. And this is worldwide data backed up by data from India as well. Okay. And the delays are sometimes, you know, projects take as much as twice the amount of time that they are planned to take. Similarly, uh, at least uh, two in every three projects have uh, cost overruns. And these cost overruns are on average double or more than double project costs, right? So construction projects very rarely finish on time and on budget. They are often delayed and finish above budget. Okay. When we start looking at why is this the case? Why do we have these challenges and problems in construction? There are several reasons that come up. Some you know, relate to things like land acquisition. It's very difficult to acquire land. This causes delays, cost overruns. Uh, there are issues with regards to design and so on. There are issues with regards to procurement. Um, you know, very often we pick the lowest bidder who is not necessarily the best person to construct, et cetera. So there are a number of reasons that are in the pre-construction domain, things like land acquisition, et cetera, which in the construction domain, we cannot really control. But it turns out that quite a few of these inefficiencies exist in construction as well, right? So in fact, 25% of project costs are often wastefully spent during the construction phase. In other words, you can reduce project costs by about 25% by constructing a lot more efficiently. And if you add this up uh, and you look at the number of projects that India is executing, this is actually a significant number when you look at it in terms of the country's GDP, et cetera, right? So in other words, construction projects are delayed. Not all the reasons are related to what happens during construction, but Construction certainly is inefficient and can be improved. Okay, so what happens in construction? Why are construction projects? Uh, why are projects delayed during construction? What's the problem? Okay, there are several issues. Um, in many cases, people are ready to work, but the drawing has not reached a construction site yet, um, or the drawing has reached the construction site, but there are some issues with the drawing and the, and the ground realities on the construction site, or uh, the drawings are there, but the material has not come to site. Uh, the drawings and the material are there, but the work front is not free. Somebody else is working, you're having to wait. Uh, and this is causing delays and rising costs. Or you have the drawings, the material, the work front, but labor is unavailable. You don't have the right quality of labor with the right qualification on site. So these are the kinds of challenges that you typically find on construction sites that lead to delays and cost overruns. Okay. And if you were to really look at all of these, you'll find that all of these relate to the challenge of coordination, right? Essentially, the issue is we have so many different people on a construction site, so many different contractors, subcontractors, designers, design consultant, vendors, et cetera, that coordinating so that everyone appears on site at exactly the right time to execute their work, right, is a big challenge. And very often you find that the designers are ready, but the subcontractor is not, right? The subcontractor and the designers are ready, but the vendor is not, right? So essentially what you have on construction is a coordination problem. And because of this coordination problem, you have error, you have uh, delays, cost overruns, and so on. Okay. Now, lean construction essentially says this is the problem that we are trying to solve, right? So lean construction is all about coordinating better, all about solving the coordination problem, right? And lean says, hey, there's a couple of things that we can do. On the one hand, you know, we can talk a little bit about contracts, right? And try to figure out how we can write contracts that allow or enable people to coordinate. This is at the macro level. 
Second, at the site level, Lean talks about a number of systems, and I'm sure you're learning several of those in this, uh, in this course, last planner, value stream mapping, et cetera, things that you can do on site, right, to identify waste better, minimize them, and therefore quarantine, okay? But an important third component to this whole Lean puzzle is the use of digital technology as a tool to enable coordination, right? And that digital technology in many cases is building information modeling on BIM, which is going to be the subject of what I'm going to talk about. So now I'm going to move on to my next slide where we're going to talk a little bit about building information modeling, what it is, and then we'll try to come back and see how it helps with lean construction, okay? So building information modeling is essentially a platform, a digital platform, which allows you to bring all kinds of construction related information together on a single platform, right? So it involves the development of what we call a parametric 3D model. So we have a three-dimensional model, which has geometric information about the structure that you're trying to build. But on top of that geometric information, we also have all other kinds of information, information regarding fabrication, information regarding con construction, information regarding uh, the material specification and, and all of that. So all of that is brought under one single platform, right? And that essentially is what building information modeling is, okay? So here is a, another diagram that maybe explains this a little bit clearly. Traditionally, you, if you want to build a small house, you have architectural information, construction information, structural information, mechanical information, electrical information, all kinds of information that are all stored separately in separate files and separate documents. In building information modeling, all of that is stored on the same platform, right? All interconnect, right? So the, the construction related information, the architectural, the structural, everything is on one platform. And in order to put all of this on one platform, it clearly requires coordination. So if you can implement BIM properly, then naturally you will be coordinating well, right? So this essentially is what BIM is. It's a platform where you bring in geometric 3D information about, a, about an object, about a structure, but also add all other kinds of information. So you have a single source of proof, a single source of digital information for the entire project, which allows people to coordinate better because they're all putting that information in the same repository if there is any mismatch in that information, it becomes very easy to find out and very easy to coordinate and rectify, right? So that in essence is what building information model is. Now, this is not new. This is not research. This is commercially available. There are a number of technology providers who provide uh, building information modeling software that you can buy and use off the shelf. Perhaps some of the more famous ones are Autodesk. Uh, some of you might have heard of a tool called Revit, which is Autodesk's uh, building, in, one of Autodesk's building information modeling platforms. Then you have another company called Bentley. Bentley has, again, a suite of tools. So well, the point I'm trying to make is you can go ahead and use these right away. They're all readily available. Okay. But the question that you might ask me is why should we use it? What is the benefit that we get? 